Good morning, everyone. My name is Father Patrick Woods. I'm a redemptorist, and I'm here in the beautiful church of St. Mary's Parish in Annapolis. I'm a pastor here. And I believe that right now in the United States, this is our oldest active church. The redemptors came here in the 1850s and eventually built this magnificent Gothic church. St. John Newman, the saint of our order, laid the cornerstone. And Father Francis Silos, the Adabotic saint of our order, was the pastor here. And so today I'm going to uh, speak on the Gospel of August 6th, which is the story of the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus. So I'm going to read the Gospel. Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, and we thought, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell frustrated and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Ten years ago, I had the trip of a lifetime to the Holy Land. It was awesome to stand on the same ground where our Lord the Savior walked, but to sail on the Sea of Galilee and ponder how Jesus walked on the water to the frightened apostles in a sinking boat. There were so many holy sights that moved me. And on our tour, we did come to the Mount Table, where Jesus was transfigured, and the glory of God shone through him. Our tour bus was large and comfortable, but we were informed that it could not handle all the twists and turns to get up this 2,000-foot mountain. So we had to take the van, there were maybe 10 of us. I think this van must have gone back to the time of Adam and Eve. It was very old and battered. And the, the, the road we went up on was, had no guardrails. And I wondered if we might be seeing the glory of God a lot sooner, since they were going up at a very, very frantic rate. So I think if they slowed down, we would have gone backwards. I said, Jesus was smart enough to walk not ride up on a man. In the Old Testament, Moses goes up to Mount Sinai and encounters God in a burning bush. We hear these words in the book of Exodus. You cannot see my face, but no one has seen me and lived. To protect Moses, God put him in the cleft of a rock and covered him with his hand as he passed by. We see a contrast in today's gospel with the gospel to the transfiguration. As the apostles do see the glory of God shining through Jesus. We really do not have any words to capture what it must look like and have been for the apostles to see the glory of God shining through Jesus on the table. Notice that Jesus only takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. It is clear from the Gospel that Jesus loved everyone, 
Yet in his own humanity, he had close friends. These three disciples were probably his closest disciples. They would be the ones who would be with Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane as he struggled to face what was coming in his death. And they were falling asleep. So the three men who saw the glory of God on Mount Tabor couldn't stay awake as Jesus was sweating blood. This gospel always leads me to think about what we might call peak moments of life. These are experiences that touch us deeply. We never forget them. And they may or may not transform us or change us, but we will hold on to them. Generally, we know when we're having such intense moments. Yet there are times when we only see how significant and important they were as we look back on them. I can certainly think of my profession as a redemptress or my ordination as a priest as two life-changing peak moments. But they were, but I have to say, as I was experiencing them, they had some moments of anxiety, uh, worry about when my family arrived on time, where would they be sitting, and so forth. It was a combination of great excitement, but some practical worries. I think one of the great peak experiences of my life was in a round of my being, sort of an ordinary moment. I was given a mission in Ireland, in the very village where my mother and father were from. And I was with my best friend, Father John McGowan. And we had an incredible week uh, being in the village of Flagmont uh, and Killinana. We were preaching the gospel in two churches where my parents had been baptized and raised. And as we gave this mission, the people began to love the two Yanks, as they referred to us. Of course, we used a lot of humor and funny stories, and I don't think they were completely used to that. And so on the last night, we had a great closing. The bishop of the diocese came in. It's wonderful. And then they were naturally having a party after the end of the mission. And it was going to be held, of course, at the local pub. And so we, John and I were walking down in the dark to this pub, just having finished this great time of mission. And I thought to myself, doesn't get any better than this. Preaching in the village of your parents with your best friend. I'm sure you have had such peak moments in your own lives. Perhaps it was when you fell in love with your spouse and were married. Or maybe when you held a newborn child, son or daughter in your arms, immediately after the birth of the child, or when you finally had an adoption you longed for. There are no words, I think, that we can come up with that can completely capture such experiences. Sometimes they come when we least expect them. I recall visiting a woman who was dying. She was a middle-aged woman, not old. And I asked her what she was feeling and was she afraid of dying. And she said to me with a big smile, I can't wait to see God. I was so moved by that faith. You might have had such a surprising experience. You had an ass. Maybe a word you heard in the scripture, or a verse from a song. Liturgy can be very powerful for us. Sometimes even a movie or a television show can so inspire us that when it ends, we say, Wow, that was something I want to watch that again. But what always captivates me about the story of the Transfiguration is how it ends. Peter says, let's put up three tents and stay here forever. This is great. Peter doesn't want to leave the mountaintop. He wants to stay and hold on to that experience. Let us stay here forever. But Jesus says, we must go back now down the mountain. We must go back to ordinary life. 
which in the case of Jesus means going to Jerusalem, being condemned to death, and dying an agonizing death on the cross. Some scripture scholars say that maybe God the Father gave this moment to Jesus to strengthen him for what was to come, or maybe to the apostles so they would be able to face the very dark days they would be facing. Most of us live our lives, most of the life is in what I would call ordinary time. We may have some incredible peak moments at time, along with some very, very painful and difficult ones. Still, the majority of our lives is lived in life called regular time. How we view this time is very important. We may take each hour and day and moment for granted. But all these thousands upon thousands of moments are what make a life. And they are our gift from God. And none of us know how many more we will have. I have a, an image in my room that reads, Every common bush of fire. So Moses sees the glory of God in a burning bush. In our ordinary lives, we can see God breaking into our lives in so many countless ways. It's where we can live and love one another. On April 3rd, 1968, the day before he died, Dr. Martin Luther King spoke these words that I think capture a lot, somewhat of the wonder of the transfiguration. I quote, Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind like anybody I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. And I'm not concerned about that now. I want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up the mountain and have looked over it. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we are a people. We will get to the promised land. And I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any person. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Beautiful words said in 1949. And we always see Christ 